higher level sort of say where when they come to you guys where it's like yeah you know what i can strike up a conversation and things like that but i don't know how to seal the deal sort of say or is it really you have to start with these guys from the beginning like hey ever tried having a conversation with a stranger no i'm totally anxious about that uh well it just really varies it really varies depending on the person um we've got we've had all sorts really from people who are actually pretty socially proficient who just need to pull out their skills they just want to up their game a little bit as it were through to people who are very socially anxious and they find it very hard to strike up a conversation with anybody and they just need that encouragement to to really get into it you know mm -hmm. because the, the reason i ask is um as you would know there is a sort of stigma on this like you're going to a boot camp to approach people and things like that. But you have to keep in mind, especially with what is going on uh, in the world as of late, people are separated socially. Yes. Not going out and about that much anymore. And uh, this generation, which one is that? Generation Z, whatever, are being raised on screens, so to say. Mm. And having basic human interaction, they haven't been raised with that so that was the reason i asked like what kind of guys do you get in those boot camps well, certainly certainly some of the younger guys that come on board who maybe are in gen, gen z or whatever or younger mm. millennials or gen z guys do fit that stereotype you know they are guys who are have mainly sat around in their room playing computer games and being on reddit and whatever you know that kind of thing and um they just perhaps have lacked having those social interactions, you know, um, mm -hmm. they've lacked experience of that. But equally, we've taught guys of, of all different kinds. You know, we've taught guys in their 40s. We taught one guy in his 60s um, who are successful professional guys who are not so, sort of like some, some sort of basement dwelling, you know, nerds. These are people who can have a decent conversation. You meet, you meet them in a bar and you think, yeah, this is a solid guy. But... Mm -hmm. Uh, for whatever reason, they're just not quite connecting on that male to female level. And so they come to us and we're able to, you know, to help them and to sort of look at what they're doing and to and to coach them through it. And it's not even really necessary to say that we are, I would I would never claim I am, you know, some sort of like on high, on high deity at this kind of stuff. But You're I have, I, I, no, well, no, but I have done a ton of approaches in my life. And also sometimes it's just having that external viewpoint of somebody outside who can look at you with some experience both myself and, and, and coaching other people can look at what you're doing and say well actually I, in my experience if you tweak this you probably get a better result and it's really cool what we see happening because we get guys who come in and on day one you know they're having kind of car crash conversations and by day four mm -hmm. you know they're getting phone numbers and they're going on dates and you know and it, it's usually just a few fairly small things Mm -hmm. that can be tweaked that make the difference between failure and some success. Mm -hmm. The the guys in the 40s, are these guys who've been like uh, just divorced or never married? Well, I don't or know, man. Really. I think probably a lot of them have, have been divorced or, or they've been in long-term relationships. I mean, I don't know that there's that many guys in their 40s, except for me. Um, <laughs> and a couple of, a few people I know in London, actually. Um, who haven't been married. I think I think most people by this age probably have been married, haven't they? Been through the ringer. Mm -hmm. And I, either they're still married or they've come out the other side in some sort of divorce situation. Hmm. Well, then it's actually a very positive thing that they're still going out there, that they're not... What's the word I'm looking... Or what's the phrase I'm looking for? Atrophying. Yeah, something like that. Like, they've not given up. They still want to go out there because well, divorce takes a toll on people i mean i've seen some stories where i'm like damn i damn. i understand why you don't want to do it anymore even though like one bad experience doesn't need to count for all experiences but still one real bad experience could like ugh. well if you've been like zeroed out and you've had all, like all, lost all your cash and all that kind of stuff yeah, yeah i mean definitely definitely i mean it's 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 hard to it, it's gonna be hard after that to be a sort of like fresh-faced romantic isn't it you know after all of that stuff that's happened i mean somehow you know i'm in a period now as we were saying before the show started of so i'm some kind of reflection really you know i'm looking at things i'm thinking about my life my you know where i am in life at the moment and everything like that and i am in this quite 
unique position, if you like, in the sense that for some reason, I've just never done all that stuff. You know, I've never, I've never been married. I've never been engaged. Um, I don't have kids. Um, and that's that you know of. of. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Running around, running around in Ukraine and stuff. Um, and, um, and, and really that's, that's by design, really. I mean, this is kind of what I, you know, I, I've, I've always, even as a, as, as a kid, I thought I didn't really want to want to do all that stuff. You know, um, it's not mm -hmm. to say that I, I wouldn't want to have like maybe a, a long-term partner at some point, but it's got to be the right person. And the problem is when you're me and you're, you're doing this lifestyle, I'm a very difficult person really to be in a relationship with for, 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 for various reasons, right? So um, so I, I don't know really. I mean, but like like I say, I mean, most guys really who are my age will have been married. They probably do have a couple of kids. Um, so I suppose the perspective I bring on it is slightly, I don't know really, I hope it's valuable. I mean, I guess it's a slightly removed sort of perspective on it really. Hmm. It, how I try to view that is a perspective of what could have been you know what i'm saying um to give an example like i'm 31 right now and a couple of my friends are married have kids things like that and there are cases where it ended up very well they're happily yeah. together things like that never argue you name it there are some who do argue constantly got the kid in the hopes of it becoming better and things like that yeah and I talk to my best friend Watson every now and then about it. He's not married either, doesn't have an LTR or whatever. You you could say he's one of those actual gone ghost guys who's like, no, I'm not dealing with this anymore. Like, never mind, have fun, goodbye. Yeah. And we talk about it every now and then because I inherently still do have that feeling a bit where it's like, you know what? Just one, L one main girl is fine with me. I, can, I enjoy the company and things like that. White picket fence, Let's just say, realistically, that's not going to happen. Like, I don't want to get married, not because some people would say, like, oh, I don't trust a woman or anything like that. It's absolutely mm -hmm. not that. It's more the whole state being involved thing with it. So that's yeah. not going to happen. But um, since I'm relatively young, not married, no kids and whatever, it could be a resemblance of what could have been for some people who maybe got married too early as you are for some guys in their 40s what could have been one day i've made said decisions earlier on and what yeah. still can be well if they I, make that decision yeah i mean i mean the thing is obviously you can't unmake the decisions you've made so i i can't you know if some dude's watching this and he's 47 and he's married and he's thinking oh shit i should never have done that i can't be sitting here going yeah well i didn't so but you know magic <laughs> wand yeah i mean i mean obviously you know people are, are where they are in life and that and you have to make the best of the position you're in currently um but i think increasingly what hopefully i i am able to do is to say look you know there is a way forward and it doesn't necessarily involve a white picket fence. It doesn't necessarily involve a state mandated contract with another person who can take all your money. Um, it doesn't necessarily involve what other things do people fall in with? You know, like it's it, there is there are different. There is another way to live your life. It doesn't involve growing a beard and becoming, a, a, you know, a, a full on Christian nutter. Um, and uh, and all of these different things, you know, um, there, there is a different path, there is a different way forward. And I mean, where that goes, none of us really know, right? But, um, you know, hopefully I can share some of what happens for me and maybe that's helpful for some people, you know? Mm -hmm. No, I know what you mean because um, like the divorced example, they've seen the dream, so to say, being shattered. Then you yeah. come along, it's like, well, there is a different life out there. It doesn't have to be white picket fence, you name it. Well, I think there really is, especially these days, because, well, we all know that, you know, social media, cheap travel, um, make money online. You can be based wherever you want in the world within, you know, within reason, if you've got a Wi-Fi connection, all of that stuff. You know, there are so many things now that make a very, very different life possible. Plus the fact that people are living longer in, in general, people are living longer. And we, 
we certainly have, you know, we're not all healthier, but you know, you, really, there's not much of an excuse not to be healthy as you go as you grow older, because we all know about exercise and a bit about nutrition and all these kinds of things. So, you know, you can stay pretty relevant in the as a guy in the dating marketplace, certainly through your at 100 percent through your 30s. Your 30s is your best decade, definitely through your 40s, absolutely through your 50s, and arguably into your 60s. Because when we were in Helsinki, right, mm-hmm. um, we were we were one of the students is this guy um who i won't name but this dude who's worked with james who's done sessions with james on a number of occasions older guy he's in his 60s early 60s very well put together he's also a surgeon in the state so you know decent status job good money etc cetera, etc cetera. but very well put together very well dressed very well groomed very charming witty all of this kind of stuff and that he was that he got the best results out of the whole group Nice. You know, this guy was literally, we're in Helsinki, there's guys in their 20s running around, whatever. This guy in his 60s, he was on dates the whole bloody time. He wasn't even in any of the sessions. It was like, oh, where's where's he gone? Oh, he's on a date with some 23-year-old. You know, I mean, just just mind-boggling. So if, if he can do that in his 60s, and I'm in my 40s, then you kind of think, well... And I remember saying this to my dad one time. It's a bit like, you know, what you often find is you get guys who are in their 50s, 60s, maybe late 40s who've been divorced and maybe they've got a kid or something. But they tend to be very happy because now they're they're out and about and they can kind of do their own thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And I remember once saying to my dad, well, why not just cut out the middle man? What, why, do, why do you have to go through the marriage bit that, that all of these dudes do in their thir- you know, 30s and 40s and, and then they go through some terrible fucking divorce? You know, mm-hmm. these days you don't even need to do that bit. You can just sail through to your sixties and just carry on dating and having a good time and kind of doing what you want. Mm-hmm. You know, no, you're you're right. You no, you're right about that. Especially like if the one part, like I'm, uh, I'm experiencing that now, like with Tinder and all that. I mean, you know how I am. I'm a bit lazy. I just set up the online profile to the best of my extent, but I can still get new girls and I don't need to marry them. I don't need to take them out, whatever. And then the question is like, why would I want to do that? But then you get to the question, like, what do you bring to the table? What do women bring to the table, et cetera, et cetera. But what if you don't want a table or if there's no need for a table kind of thing? Well, well, this is, this is the thing. And like, I, like I always say, I think ultimately it comes down to the kids question is very, very important. Do you want to have kids or not? Because if you want to have kids, that is a different proposition. But if you don't particularly want to have kids, and I, I think I would fall into that camp. And obviously, you know, we both know Mr. Mr. Clary, who, um, you know. Good old boomer. Uh, um, so um, if you fall into that camp, the latter camp, do you, if you perhaps don't want to have kids or you're on the fence about having kids, and I would argue Maybe if you're on the fence about having kids, you shouldn't because, you know, you shouldn't just be doing it to appease a wife or a girlfriend or because it seems like what everyone does, you know, because this is a bloody human being you're bringing into the into the world mm-hmm. with all the responsibilities that that entails. So, um, you know, if you don't want to have kids, then then things are very different because then you think, well, actually, I don't need to do the whole marriage thing. Long term relationship? Well, maybe, but maybe not, you know. Plus, I can stay looking pretty young. Plus, I can travel around. Plus, I can make money online. All of a sudden, a very different type of life potentially opens itself up for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, I think, is what guys need to need to think about. Yeah, well, because it does become a pros con list, and yeah. depending on what a pro and a con is, is that it gets a bit of a virtue difference. Like, again, what do you want? Where do your virtues lie? I would say, though, to anyone who would want the white picket fence and all that, don't go in blindly because that's what I've been seeing is happy wife, happy life. It's like, oh, uh, don't make her angry. A peace to her every wish and things like that. Yeah. And that, to me, is when you get into dangerous territory. Like, okay, if you want the white picket fence, know that, know the dynamic, be aware kind of thing and that is what a lot of guys have been are missing in my humble opinion like i said i know one guy who is married happily married but he's based as hell (laughs) seriously she uh after pregnancy she still looks good she even looks better than before kind of thing 
because she's watching her figure because she wants to be attractive for him kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you got to have frame for that kind of, yeah, you got to have frame for that. And if you don't, but you still wish you would want that, go out there and practice in all honesty, however you put it, you have to go out there and practice. Now I won't say bang through all of them. Like again, depending on where your virtues lie or whatever, but at least date them, go out, have the conversation with them, whatever. Yeah. 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 Yes, absolutely. I mean, well, you know, it all ultimately it all comes down to personal choice, but your personal choice is very likely going to be influenced by the culture around you. You yes. know, in Ukraine, I was talking to this girl last night um, who I was out with, and um, she was, we were, I mean, this is well known, right? But she was saying in Ukraine, she's 22, she was saying in Ukraine, people tend to get married by about 25. You know, mm -hmm. that's just culturally what they do. So if you're, Maybe there's some people in Ukraine watching this now. But if you're sitting around in Ukraine and you're a young guy, you're 24, 23, you're a girl, 23, whatever, you're probably thinking, hmm, it's about time I uh, put a ring on it soon because that's just what people do. But, of course, it's not, it's not just what people do. It's just what people do in Ukraine, all right? When you go to London, people are getting married probably in their 30s, 33, 34, 35, or even older. So... The idea of, well, it's personal choice. Like the person in Ukraine probably thinks, yeah, personal choice. I wanted to get married by, by 25. Mm -hmm. and it, can't, it is personal choice, but it's also personal choice that is very, very strongly colored by the cultural conditions around them. You know, and we all face different, these, these cultural conditions of different kinds. You know, it's expectation. On, well, depending on where you live, you know, you, you, you sort of absorb the cultural conditions of, of, of that place. Like, if you take the example of like, um, say, approaching uh, approaching somebody that you don't know in order to introduce yourself and ask them for a date. So mm -hmm. I was listening to a podcast the other day with a guy called James Bloodworth, who's a UK journalist, pretty very intelligent guy, um, talking about the sexual marketplace. And he was saying that he'd seen a survey in the UK that said that 17% of people think that approaching anybody you don't know is a form of harassment, you know. So, seventeen percent of people apparently in the UK. I mean, he said he that later said this was quite an old survey, and he's not sure the the, the, the exact validity. But you know, seventeen percent of people in the UK think that approaching somebody you don't know is a form of harassment. So, pr probably those seventeen percent of people are sitting there going, "Yeah, we just, you know, this is wrong. We don't do this anymore. That's not how." guys should behave towards women or, or whatever for them that is reality of what society is now like but when you go to russia um that sort of social idea doesn't really exist so you hmm. can go up and talk to somebody and you know and and there's no sense of that was a kind of harassment or that was that was some something bad that happened to me the sense is actually no that was you know thank you for coming over that was really nice um let's have a nice conversation now even if the girl isn't isn't particularly interested in you romantically um she's not going to take it as a form of harassment. So again, that idea is somewhat culturally conditioned, you know, hmm. as opposed to being reality. So all I'm saying is you've got to split, split between what you think is your own thoughts and your own conception of the world from what is being socially conditioned around you. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like I just said, like, societal wise it's being expected of you to do certain things that's where you get that peter pan uh, peter pan syndrome thing from which i absolutely yeah. hate by the way i hate that phrase for multiple reasons but it's it's kind of trying to push you back into something again like oh you're this old and you still do this well yes i have looked at what is expected of me and decided for myself that it is not the most beneficial option Oh, well, you're I mean, just you. You just don't want to grow up. It's like, well, but what does that, what does that really fucking mean, though? I mean, many many people would would look at me and they would go, um, you know, this is this is a dude in his forties. He's immature. He's um, he hasn't grown up. He hasn't settled down. He hasn't done, you know, whatever. I mean, you you could you can you can think of all the things that people people might and no doubt do say, um, but what does it really mean to to what does growing up really mean? What is what is doing the right thing really mean you know um are you more grown up because you shack up with somebody and the condom breaks and you get them pregnant you know does that make you more grown up mm. 
I mean, I have... it, it, it's, it's, it's a, I mean, without a doubt, the act and the process of raising a family, no doubt, um, expands you as a human being in, 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 in some very, um, oh, how do I put it? You know, in some very profound ways. I'm sure that's the case. How could it not, right? But mm -hmm. equally, being single and traveling the world expands you in other ways as a human being. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, any type of life experience is going to give you something, you know. Um, yes. So, and to, to, to sort of downgrade one at the expense of another is, um, doesn't logically really make sense. No, absolutely. I have given it some thought, though. Like, what does being an adult mean? One, when does one grow up? And the only, or the conclusion I came to was mostly personal responsibility. As in, do you let anyone else um, carry the burden of your life choices? Or is it just you? So as long as you are the one, uh, let's say, financing, taking responsibility, blah, 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 of the consequences of said choices, that to me, and you are capable of taking that responsibility, that would mean to me you are an adult. Yeah. And most people are capable of doing that at 18 some later on things like that mm, mm. but that was my conclusion that i came to i've been well, i mean mm. I, I just I, I i think it's all semantics though really isn't it you know being i mean it, it's all kind of semantics and it's all in the final analysis pretty meaningless really because if i get killed if i walk out of this hotel now in, after this interview after this conversation and get run over by a car and i'm dead then the whole concept of, well, did he grow up? Did he not grow up? It's all kind of fucking irrelevant, isn't it? You know? Um, it, it, and and we, we tend... What am I saying here? We tend to think about... We tend to think about the normal long life. You know, somebody who lives until their 70s or whatever. And we tend to think, well, where are you along that linear scale that society dictates should makes a successful life? But the thing is that anybody could die at any moment. Um, and so... As thinking that it has to be this linear path marked by certain defined stages is naive in the sense that at any point you can get knocked off that pedestal. You know, you, at any point, you know, something can happen to knock you off that, that linear pathway. So I don't know if it, that makes sense, but um, I think even thinking about what is an adult, well, well an adult is somebody basically who's reached the age of 18 or 19 or 20 or whatever right i mean <laughs> that is that's kind of what it comes down to it's like what is a man well old well <laughs> political mind a there. miserable pile of secrets political political minefield there right but i, I suppose what, what used to be regarded as a man was somebody with you know with male genitalia right who is you know somebody who's somebody who is who's born physically a man that that is a man what they do whether they lift or they do train or they do ballet dancing is, is sort of immaterial, but they're, they're essentially a man, right? Um, and I think it's the same thing with what is a grown-up. Well, a grown-up is somebody who's reached a certain age. You don't have to do these certain things to, to fucking prove it, right? Mm -hmm. the, the one thing you would get from it, I think, is mostly social approval. And that's where you get to the whole external accomplishments so to say by what an adult is measured with like do you have are you married do you have kids do you have a mortgage a stable job to finance all that kind of thing but let's take you for example traveled i don't know how many countries in his 40s uh still dating beautiful women in their 20s are out and about everywhere when you want where you want is is anyone being uh, held accountable for you or are you being held accountable well you are being held accountable for your own choices so why is that not adulthood then having the well, freedom to do whatever you want i, I think I th you know I, th I think it is adulthood because I, I because i'm a guy in his 40s you know i am an adult and um and therefore anything that i do is a, is adulthood that's, that's what i'm saying you know we put these arbitrary labels on it mm -hmm. so we've got these imaginary people now actually for me i'm quite fortunate because my family don't really put any pressure on me about any of this stuff. Um, and I don't really have friends who, you know, I've, I've got obviously got friends who are married and stuff like that, but, but, but in you general, have friends. Yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't resist. Imagine me one. Um, so, um, 
I've got five of them here on the couch now. Um, <laughs> so I, 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 I guess I've, I've just managed to avoid or cut out people that have put too much pressure on me to do anything differently. So I'm quite lucky in that sense. You know, I'm not suffering from loads and loads of like, I don't know, you know, people going, oh, you should be doing this, you should be doing that. Mm. Um, I tend to avoid that very fast when somebody tries to wave a finger at me and uh, point me in a certain direction. I'm like, well, why would I want to do that? Why would I want to do that? Why are you telling me to do what you think is right? Kind of yeah, thing. Nobody knows. Nobody really knows anyway. Everyone's just making it up. Um, and we're all going to die anyway. So it's all kind of like academic in a sense, you know, whether so-and-so thinks you should do this or you should do that. You know, uh, it, it's just, they're just making it up based on what they think. And there's probably ego investment involved and there's probably societal conditioning involved and so on and so forth. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But do you think, and this could be me, because I'm always hesitant about pointing fingers the other way. Do you think it's a sort of that you are a reflection, and we kind of go full circle now, a reflection on what could have been and that that triggers something in the person um, opposite of you? I think, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. But I mean, like, like I said, I don't really, I don't really get a lot of, we're, we're sort of talking about these, the imaginary critic who's going, oh, you try, you shouldn't be doing that. But I don't actually really get that much criticism in real life. So I don't in real life. I do a little bit online, um, or I used to, and that tended to be from more like the trad type people on Twitter. You know, it was those people who were like, ah, oh, you know, you need to man up and settle down and all that kind of stuff, you know. Buy a um, shed. <laughs> yeah 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 um certainly get certainly get um criticism from those people i mean i don't really much now because i don't really poke i don't i don't really poke the bear at the, you know with those people so much anymore maybe i should start again um, it, it is good for clout it is good for clout but I, I don't know if it's more fun now to trigger to, 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 to trigger trad people or black pill people though <laughs> or maybe just you could do both i suppose I a friend of mine tends to do this a lot. He um he goes and triggers a lot of the uh Rainbow Riders crowd in let's say the um the geek sphere, like uh, right. the comic book sphere and things like that, because there's a lot going on with desexualizing characters and oh we can't have them be drawn attractive because otherwise you name it. We yeah. want uh, everybody to feel comfortable and yada, 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 yada. And he just keeps pissing them off with <laughs> uh, old comic book photos and how they look now and the desexualization of everything and the demasculinization of everything. And they just he just pisses them off all yeah. the time. And then, he, then he comes over. He's like, I got 10 new Twitter followers. I'm like, okay, you're proud now? Mm, you're happy? <laughs> well, it's always quite fun to trigger people. Um, that is true. That is and I, true. And I, I always used to get, I mean, I, I, I haven't been as active on Twitter recently, full stop, to be honest. I mean, I, I want to, I will get back to it. Um, it's partly because of all the traveling around and stuff like that. But um, the, I mean, you know, I, I, I've greatly enjoyed triggering trad people and black pill people and so on, you know, in the past. But it, it is ultimately a massive waste of time. That's, that's, I mean, I guess you can say, yeah, it's good for clout, but. You know, ultimately, you're just engaging with people that you don't really agree with. They're not going to agree with you. And it's just like, well, whatever, you know. Yeah, I've learned that the hard way. Like, just stop arguing with people. Lead by example, and you'll be fine. But mm. you, there is always this ego investment involved where it's like, I know I'm right. I want you to acknowledge me I'm right. And the the trick is to just be able to let that go and let life handle it for you. Kind of know what I'm saying? It sounds very spiritual, woo woo, magical, but let's say I am so convinced I'm right and I'm very yeah. convinced that person is wrong. If that truly be the case, then life will solve it. Life will solve it in and of itself. Because if they're really wrong, their life probably isn't going to end up very great. Well, I, I don't think, yeah, I mean, you know, you've got to just do your own thing, haven't you? I don't, th I don't think there's going to be some great reckoning where, you know, in, in 40 years time, we all sit down with like Pat Stedman and, um, I don't know, <laughs> in jail. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, both of those, yeah, we all sit around and we're like, okay, so who was really right here? I, I just don't think it's good, you know, like, like it, the, the, the problem is the people, the imaginary, these ghosts on the internet that we all argue with, they're, they're going to they're gonna disappear. They're not going to be in our lives in five years' time. And this is the problem with taking advice from people online. Because you get some bloke online going, yeah, just wife up, uh, you know, wife her up, have 17 kids, go and buy a farm in Montana. And, you know, that's what a real man would do. And, you know, the naive young man thinks, right, that sounds great. I'm going to do that. And then when it all goes to shit, you know, the bloke on Twitter is not going to be there. <laughs> you know, the bloke on Twitter is going to be Save off. me! He's, he's deleting his account. He's doing something else or whatever, right? So you've got to... You've got to drill down into yourself and what you actually fucking want. And that is a to... horrible innuendo. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, wasn't, it wasn't an innuendo. I meant it literally. It wasn't an innuendo. <laughs> I'm just, I've just been in Berlin. Um, no, <laughs> well, that explains it. Yeah. No, you've got to you've got to think about what the fuck you actually want, and you've got to go with that. And fuck these other people, these other idiots, particularly these idiots online who you're never even going to fucking see anyway. I mean, who cares, right? You know. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Like um Ryan had that a while ago where he um kind of dissed Peterson in a well, it was actually um it was a grounded reason. A yeah. solid reason. Sorry about that. And people in the comments were like, This man was like a father to me, and blah blah blah. And we were kind of like, Really? Some guy you never met who just wrote a book, he's online, and he'll probably never really care about you. I mean I would not say Peterson doesn't care overall. He does. I mean, or he's a very good actor getting that emotional, getting that emotional when people interact with him. But on a personal level, he's not going to come to your door and help you pay your mortgage. Yeah. Or pay your I, rent. I thought you could get away with dissing uh, Peterson once. Cause I remember years ago, I, a few years ago, I used to diss him because I mean, like I, I I, I haven't. I, to be honest, I don't even. I haven't even followed that much of his stuff, really. I mean, I've read his book and the, the first book and stuff like that. Not the first book, the the Twelve Rules and, and, and things. And I've seen some of his videos. No, well, I was never a massive fan, largely because he's always seemed to me to be quite a, basically quite a traditionalist, really. And that always gets my back up a little bit. But you know, I mean, I haven't got any major issue. I mean, he's you know whatever. He's 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 doing what he's doing. And he cool. does more well than harm. I'm sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I liked his. I liked the Twelve Rules book. I thought that was pretty good. But um, I, I used to sort of, I used to write some stuff on Twitter, like slating him just for a laugh, just because I knew it would trigger people. And um, you, you get people coming back going, "How dare you say that about Peterson? He is the one man." You know, like really vehement. And I guess that's, I guess that's cool because it's testament to Peterson's ability to build a tribe. You know, his, his, his. Um, ability to in marketing really to position himself as a kind of cult leader of these guys, um, but it does make you think. I mean, come on, it's a you know, it's a bit fucking sad. I mean, yes, take something from these characters for, for sure. You know, take some of the wisdom, but I, I mean, don't hero worship people. That's always a mistake. Oh yeah, absolutely. But like you mentioned, take from it what works best from you. That's the sphere in and of itself as well. There are people who whose life I whose life path I don't want to follow. But that doesn't mean there aren't solid lessons in there. Yeah. Uh, a good example, and I keep falling back to this, would be Tay. I knew you uh, were gonna say that. I yeah, knew. I know it, I know it, I know it. But his uh well the comply or goodbye thing. It's just something everybody could apply in his life to get that mental point of origin down. It's yes. like, yeah, just comply or goodbye kind of thing. You don't have to be a millionaire, kickboxer, Lambo driving, whatever for that, but you can take that and apply it to yourself. Um, you, for instance, you don't have to keep banging on chicks until you're 50 or whatever, but you can take your lessons for, let's say, whatever amount of time you need to get to the point where you want to be. Yeah. Doesn't mean you have to follow every life step you do. Yes. Happy, same thing. Take his advice on minimalism, but don't go as far as he does buying new balance and all that. I mean, by God, <laughs> that's a taste. Well, don't get that far, Jesus. I mean, yeah, oh my God. He even got them from Goodwill, I believe. By God, yeah. man, have some sense. <laughs> There's got to be a limit to these things, hasn't there? Mm -hmm. But it comes down to the whole. Just take from it 
what benefits you and don't replicate everything that person is. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. I mean, you know, like we're in the business of building personal brands ourselves, so it's maybe would be deemed a bit hypocr hypocritical because obviously we want people to buy into our I, I keep telling guys, like, do not do what I do. Yeah, don't. Go, go. It tends to work. Jesus Christ. That would be, be a terrible, terrible mistake. I do want to know how you get that hair, though. Like, by God, man, I wish. I man, I can't give. I can't. I can't give the secrets away. If I, how many if, people maybe, have you sacrificed for that? Like, what weird, strange, death, eyes wide my, shut thing is going on there in London? Maybe on my deathbed, I'll uh, I'll, reveal, I'll reveal. The I'll last reveal. book Troy Francis ever wrote: How I Got My Hair. <laughs> I think it's just good luck, really. I don't think there's anything particularly uh, good genetics. Yeah, but you got to keep yourself. You got to try and keep yourself in reasonable shape. I mean, I know I was joking about lifting and all that stuff, but I mean, you've got to sort of try and um, you've got to do the exercise. You've got to sort of like not that it helps your hair specifically, but you know what I mean. You've got to try and keep yourself in decent nick because if you do, as a guy, you do have this longevity through your forties and so on. Um, well, I mean, I will. I'm certainly. I certainly appear to be getting away with it. And I say it, meaning you know the kind of degenerate lifestyle that I'm that I'm leading. I certainly seem to be getting away with it through my forties. I think I'll be okay till fifty. What mm -hmm. happens after fifty? Well, well, we'll have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. But um, it's um, yeah, you know, I mean, um, you can certainly have longevity if you want to have it as a guy. Oh, absolutely, and not even um, let's say you're a guy, you're in your forties, you're single, whatever. You don't have to go um as young with dating sort of say but just yeah. look at the average guy who's 40 when you are in shape you are miles ahead so yeah. even in the age range you feel comfortable with being well put together looks wise physically just puts you miles ahead there is no reason to age disgracefully so mm. to say mm. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and and the the age that people choose to to date is is up to them, of course, as long as it's <laughs> above legal age. Of course, goes without saying. Um, but you know, this isn't about saying date younger women per se. I mean, many guys will date somewhat younger women. You know, it doesn't need to be in the twenties. You can date women who are more maybe in their thirties or, or whatever. It's 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 entirely personal choice. Whoever you find attractive. Um, but the point is that can you remain sexually relevant through your 40s and into your 50s and the answer is absolutely yes you can in fact as i've seen into your 60s as well is is absolutely fine so um so with that knowledge in mind guys need to think okay so how do i actually want to shape my life mm -hmm. you know do i actually want to marry karen from accounts um and just get it and just cash in my chips or is there something a bit more out there is there a different way that i can approach this you know can I ask you something very personal and you don't have to answer if you don't want Thank to? You. <laughs> have you ever thought about um I should have cashed in my chips? Um well I mean look there there's certainly been women that I've been in love with, you know, what whatever love means as Prince Charles said. Um, Do you believe I, in a thing called love? <laughs> well, I, I mean I think there's a two there's two parts to that. I think in some ways I in some ways I don't because I think that love is is largely a chemical reaction. Sorry to be unromantic about this, but I think it's largely oxytocin. It's it's brain chemicals and it's bonding and all the rest of it. Um, but nevertheless, we can't ignore the fact that it is a real human phenomenon. You know, just be, whether it's chemical or it's not. I mean, you know, it, it's it's a real thing. You have those feelings for for for, for a person, and I've a hundred percent had those feelings for women in my life including very recently women in my life you know i've had very those feelings for 100 percent. should i have moved it to the next level should i have cashed in the chips as you say i don't know i mean you know the thing is there's no you can't do a controlled experiment on this can you you can't say right this life path and then this life path and let's see what, what works out better the only thing that i do know is that when you do cash in your chips <laughs> um it, it, it means it means a significant change in your in, in life and what you're able to do hmm. um 
and 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 that means things like travel. It, obviously, it means that you are, you know, you you become, you know, well, unless you, I know that there are different models, but you know, you you might end end up becoming, you know, your 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 enforced enforced monogamy. You know, you 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 enter into domesticity. Um, you, you you sacrifice a lot of things if you when you when you take it further down the line and and you know i have friends who are married who have children and they they will say you know you sacrifice a friend of mine actually paul janker says you 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 sacrifice time you sacrifice money and you sacrifice there was another thing as well um i can't remember exactly what it was but you know you, you the reality is you do have to make certain sacrifices and that's going to ch fundamentally change the nature of your life now you might say yes but on the other side you get security and you get your beautiful wife and you get you know blah 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 all of that stuff um it, it's it, it's a judgment everyone's got to make you mm -hmm. know it's a judgment that everyone's got to got to make for themselves really but it has to be said when you look at the divorce statistics and you look at you know things like infidelity statistics and stuff you know, it's, it's it's not looking like it's a fairy tale for everybody. Let's just put it that way. Mm -hmm. And might sound strange me saying this. Divorce or the divorce in and of itself isn't the worst part about it, as in you separating. The consequences of you separating, that's what's putting people off. It's like yeah. all of the involvement of lawyers and the state and the IRS or whatever it's called in, in wherever you live that is that's what's um so yeah to put it bluntly that's what's killing guys all the the the, the hassle afterwards what they have to go through custody battles lawyer uh, bills you name it yeah there's all there's all there's all of that but i mean also as well i mean you know you you say you say oh it's not the just the splitting up part but i mean i i don't really you know do you really want to be with someone 10 15 years and then and then you break up with them i mean that's pretty fucking painful. oh that's oh that that's, will that, hurt that is also and no matter who pulls the trigger that is also pretty fucking painful stuff you know imagine you're with a wife for 10 years and then she cheats on you or something like that i mean that's pretty fucking bad in itself oh, and, then, and then on top of that you've got all of the the money and the you know Mm -hmm. I remember girls on. I remember girls cheating on me after about two years or whatever. That already hurt like hell. It's like, oh, yeah. So you oof. know, it, it, it's it, 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 it's a very very um, it's a serious undertaking. Is all I can say. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's not for the faint hearted, really. I mean, I think the reason I think a, a lot of people, I think one of the problems that I have is that as you get older. And particularly, obviously, being engaged in this sphere and talking to people about all this stuff the whole time, um, it, it it becomes harder and harder to take that leap of faith. I think if you're like 22 and you don't know any of this stuff and you, you meet the cute girl, you know, from high school or whatever, and, you know, you guys get together, you're going to be more likely just to do it because you haven't really considered the, the other sides of it. When you get mm -hmm. to my age... You know, it's just like, geez, I mean, you know, so um, is that a good or a bad thing? Don't know, really. Um, you know, as I say, there's no control experiment, is there? Oh. The thing is also, and um, I've realized this as I got older, you're a 31-year-old scrub here, but it's like I can get married whenever I want to kind of thing. Like, um, and that sounds very, like, preposterous kind of thing bloating but more like when i'm 40 i could still date younger and get married kind of thing it's not like i'm some incel whatever ugly you name it mm. if i ever changed my mind i would still be able to do it kind of thing and well, i think most, i think most guys can do it because mm -hmm. i don't think it's such a amazing feat because really most women ultimately that's kind of what they want you know, not, not I'm not saying that you go on a date with a girl and she's going to want to marry you, but it's sort of like if you, you know, you you start dating somebody and you know you guys get closer and so on and so forth. Really, for most women, you know, ultimately they, they want to have children, um, and most of them want to get married because, well, you you can be cynical and say because you know they they recognise it's a good deal, but I think probably more commonly it's because they want stability and they they you know they like the idea of that kind of domesticity. So most of the time, 
you know, you get close with the girl and she's going to be, she's really going to be pushing that agenda. So I don't think it's actually that difficult for any girl, you know, unless they are subnormally kind of unattractive or, or whatever. I think, I think the reality is for most guys, getting, uh, getting married is eminently possible. Um, the bigger question is, do you actually want to do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that becomes, like I said, it becomes a um, pro-con kind of um, analysis where, let's say, at your age, you have been living your lifestyle for so long, and then it becomes, do I want to give this up for that? Like, does it hold weight, so to say? Well, and I think a lot of guys don't know the opposite because they went so fast into the white picket fence. Yeah, well, I, 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 was talking, I was talking to Cappy about this once, actually, um, off the, you know, on a on a personal call, and um, and he said, you know, the thing is, you will now be so conditioned in ways that you can't even imagine, you know, that to to, to enjoying your freedom, that for you, he meant, you know, for me, it will be very difficult to go into something long term. And I, but I know that, you know, I lived with a girl for six months a couple of few years ago, and it was a fucking disaster. You know who said that too? Strangely enough. My dad. Oh. Weirdly enough, yeah, a bit of a personal thing. Dad. Is that going to be the twist? Well, a bit of a bit of a personal thing, but um, parents divorced, mother deceased, blah 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 blah. And I asked my dad a while back. I'm like, because he never dated again. And I asked him, like, don't don't you miss it or whatever? And he even told me he's like, sometimes I miss it, but then I think how much I would have to adapt how much, how I would have to trade in. Like right now, when I want to get up in the middle of the night and do things, I can do that. Uh, I can eat whenever I want to eat. I can eat what I want to eat. No one to um, take into consideration, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And I noticed that that freedom of choice for him without needing to, quote unquote, ask permission was just so much more worth to him than anything else what your dad was saying that being a lot sort of on his own was, yeah 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 mm. <laughs> never well, even said that that's... like that i think that i think the problem is that um we we all we kind of all want both things at the same time don't we really i think that we all want a bit of security you know it's nice to think there's someone on the other side of the phone it's nice to think you know you've had a bad day and you can call her and she's like sympathetic or she sends you a nice text message with some emojis or something that's kind of nice but also as guys we also you know as as we all know we also we want a bit of strange it is true do you know it what i mean is. we want we want that variety of we want that variety as well. it, it pisses and, me off to a certain point man where it's like i got a brunette and then i'm like blonde would be nice then I got a blonde that's like brunette would be nice. It's like no, you're not, ah. it's not like you're not choosing an ice cream. It's not like oh yeah, a bit of peppermint. Oh yeah, a bit a little bit of mint chip would be nice. <laughs> oh no, actually chocolate. It's always hmm. There's something else. There's there's a different flavor. It's like ah, oh. <laughs> just have one who who understands that they are out there though. They are out there. Yeah. Girls yeah. who do understand that. Like honey, I love you. You're blonde and all that, but you're not a brunette. You need to understand. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, there's all number of there's all number of women out there um, who want different things for sure. You know, mm. um, and you know, if you want to be somebody who's you're with a girl, but you're also kind of messing around on the side, that there will be girls who will be into that, or who will who will allow for that to happen, right? You know, that I know, you know, personal experience, right? That that's hundred percent doable. Um, and you know, uh, don't be sorry. You're saying the number of women not wanting children is growing. The same go, the same goes for those who want to pick, play second fiddle to a man on a mission, pick better women. I mean, yeah, there's there is some truth in that for sure. There is some mm -hmm. truth in that. You you can find women who can accommodate these things. But as I've been finding recently, <sighs> freedom is a very intoxicating thing. Mm -hmm. I think pure freedom to do what the fuck you want when you want without having to answer to anybody. Is a very intoxicating drug and in my experience even having a woman who's pretty hands off but she's still there on the other side of the phone and she's still like oh when are you coming back what are you doing when are you doing this blah 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 you know i mean to not have that is is, is kind of a luxury mm -hmm. i think i know what you mean i kind of know what you mean not not the same situation but i i know the feel 
kind yeah. of thing where it, you don't, like I said, there is no, and uh, take this with a grain of salt, but there's no permission asking. There's no explanation for anything you do. You just do. And there's yeah. no one to hold you accountable or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Do you have still? Do you still have some time for questions in the chat? Or yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Okay. Let because... me just, um, do you want to handle the first one? Let me let me just go for it. I've got to sort something out. For one one second. Okay. Yeah. No. No. Go ahead. Because this one was JD. Uh, I'm gonna save this one for Troy because this one has relevance to his boot camp. Let's see. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I can better do it like this because here I've got the entire chat. Jigo, mm. <laughs> does it then boil down to freedom of choice? Yeah, kind of. Uh, my perspective is that a lot make uneducated choices and that a lot of them are uh, socially influenced like environmentally, where it's like, we expect you to do this kind of thing instead of someone actually following his gut feeling. Uh, let's see. Da, da, da. Stop referencing that man. He is not nice and his breath smells. You mean Clary? No, no, I never. Luckily, I never smelled that man. <laughs> Uh oh. Oh wait, there was a question. Let's see. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh yeah, Jean Simone got the reference. Dracula from Castlevania. What is a man? A miserable pile of secrets. Uh where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Somebody asked us if we had experience in a long-term relationship oh but now that you're back jd asked come on where is it yeah have you ever had someone who's too sociable ig they're not scared to start speaking but let loose a dolge of speech um yeah actually um we we have had people like that and um what often tends to happen is that they're absolutely fine starting conversations and they're quite socially adept mm -hmm. you know because it's not like every single person who comes on one of these things is like a tongue-tied basement dwelling you know sort of sort of guy who can't string a sentence together you get guys who are very sort of socially adept but they tend to be too too nice guy they tend to just be very like social chit chat um and so they have great interactions that can last for a long time but the interactions don't really go anywhere okay and mm -hmm. this is something that can be tweaked i mean we had one guy um <laughs> he may he may well i hope he doesn't mind me he won't mind i'm not gonna name him he won't he won't mind me mentioning but um we have one guy in helsinki who was literally he would be on the street having 40 minute conversations with women and then it would lead nowhere and then in the end he'd be like oh can i get your number she, no i've got a boyfriend you know so <laughs> and he's literally been talking to her for like 40 minutes so um so yes i mean we do have those people and it's sort of like you, you've got to underline the interaction with some sense of sexuality you know she's mm -hmm. got to know why you're there right um and it's better to get rejected quickly than to be talking to someone for 40 minutes and then she just goes yeah i've got a boyfriend right you know for, for obvious reasons mm -hmm. you kind of you want to get to the point quick not too quick but quick enough kind yes of yeah oh i didn't even tell you something um it was funny Actually, I was at a sort of festival. A friend of mine had uh, an anniversary of his company kind of thing, yada, 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 yada. And I started talking to this girl. And a uh, very nice interaction. But all of a sudden, her nephews show up. Just kids, four or five years old. After that, her father shows up. After that, her uncle shows up. So I had half of the family of her already there. I just look at her. I'm like... I'm sorry I didn't invite my dad over. Otherwise, I would have happily introduced you to him. But this is the first time I already meet her family on the first date. She just looks at me like, yeah, that wasn't the plan, you know. <laughs> that was one of the strangest things that ever happened to me, immediately meeting the family. Did get a number, though. Ended up uh, as a dead lead, but still, was fun. Was fun. Whatever. you got to put yourself out there. Yeah. Um, re 
Ridoku, I hope I pronounced that right. Troy and Jack, have you ever been married? No. Engaged? No. Or in an LTR with one girl? Yes. Uh, yeah, no, I, I'd answer the same as that. Not married, not engaged. I have been in exclusive LTRs, yes. Mm. Mean engaged? No, never. Like, uh... You, you. I remember being young and telling your like one of your first girlfriends, like, "Yeah, we're gonna be together forever. We're gonna get married." Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Seventeen. <laughs> Ring her up now. Yeah. Just say, "Listen, you know, <laughs> you know what we said." Well, you know, let's go. Oh, let's go I on. remember. I don't know. Uh, you know, Friends, right? The series. Yeah. Mm. Um, Ross and Rachel. Like, if we're still single, then we're gonna get married. It's like, oh. Knowing what I know now, it's like, oh. That's the kind of thing, that, that's the, stereotypically, that's the kind of thing that the, the girl's going to say to the sort of the beta guy, where it's like, you know, I'm just going to bang a load of chads first. And um, if I can't tie one of them down, then maybe I'll, you know, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm worn out and haggard, then maybe I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll give you a shot then, <laughs> sort of thing. It's like, uh, what's her name? Jenny from Forrest Gump. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's just horrible. Like, she got a kid from another man, AIDS, and hadn't talked to him in like 10 years or so. Yet, Forrest still ends up taking care of her kid. Like, well, oof. he hadn't read The Unplugged Alpha by uh, Richard Cooper, had he? Oh, he should have had. Should have had. Uh, let's see. I don't see a lot of questions anymore. Want to wrap it up? Yeah, yeah, can do. Yeah, because we we have a great announcement. We have a great announcement. Where is I can't drop it in both our chats, but okay, you want to do it or should I? No, you can do it. The Fifty Shades trilogy in audio will be released very soon. The date is coming, but we have uploaded a promo. And you can get that right here in chat. I have dropped the link. Let's see. I typed that out wrong. You can go to that link and hear the first chapter of the upcoming Fifty Shades of Grey game trilogy. I'm very proud of that. Troy and I worked together on it. And uh, you can go and check that out right there. Cool. Well, we should tell them what it is, really. So Fifty Shades of Game is, is a series of three books that I wrote. Uh, basically, well, the first one is about fetish, and the fetish should be these DSM scenes and pulling girls there. The second one is about swingers and swinging parties and meeting women there. And then the third one is about strip clubs and strippers. Okay, so it's the seedy side of game, the seedy side of dating, which is what we've called this show, if you like. And uh, so those books have been out for a couple of years. But... Due to popular demand, we've created an audiobook version, which Jack has narrated. Uh, it will be out very, very soon. But in the meantime, you can listen to the uh, chapter that, that Jack has uploaded on that link. And I'm going to be putting it up on my channel soon as well. And that was it. Again, I am very excited about this. And I can tell you how much fun I had with the uh, swingers chapters, <laughs> with the conversations you had with a couple of them. And there is a cameo of a great, great man, Ernst, the Count himself, in there as well. Absolutely. Twitter, Twitter people will know who he is, Ernst Graf. Ernst Graf. I had a great time narrating him as well, though. But yeah, that is... Yeah, the uh, interview you did with him in part three. Oh, sorry, I see what you mean. I, saw, I thought you should, you should contact him and see if he wants uh, any of his books narrating. Oh, nice. Yeah, I could do that, too. That would be nice. So, yeah, that's it. Smash the like button and uh, subscribe if you haven't. That's it. Spasiba. Spasiba. Can you end it? You're the one who's in the studio, Troy. Oh, I'm just staring at the screen. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go. <laughs> you have to end it. <laughs> All right. See you later, guys. Cheers, people. Bye.